lie. You lie. You lie. Steady as the heart. You lie. It is a strong pulse. The strongest I've ever known. Very well. The blood does not lie. But my warning still stands. Stand back. Not a foot on these stairs. He is the serpent that speaks for a thousand tongues except his own. He is the death of the soul with a smile and a flourish. Heed my second warning. Shun the advocate whose very sentence is a sentence. Through fog we ride. Through blood we wade in search of a name. A demon plots, but with his name we will bind him. This sore of bloody branches knows, but will not speak just yet. No matter, there is no remedy against patience and torture. Okay, let's see what this master wants. How can I tell if he's to be trusted? <laughs> you don't need me to tell you that. True, I'm in deep, deep. You want to buy something or not? No. Ah, there you are, and with just the little demonic host I've been looking for. You don't mind if I have a word with Maslosa, do you? I was just curious about the progress of your little hunt. I met your old buddy, Jahan, if that's what you mean. I don't have buddies. I have associates. So, did he help you with the, uh, <clears throat> matter at hand? He's putting me through my paces. I have a few more hoops to jump through before he'll help me. Nothing in life is free, I suppose. Make sure you do jump them, though, sir. You won't be sorry. The lizard's eyes are dark as polished coal, void of all light. A faint frost seems to cover the cracked and broken scales around his mouth. You have a reputation for both malfeasance and chaos. Imagine my surprise when it took you so long to find your way here. I see the miasma surrounding our islet certainly did not hinder you. Well, here you stand. In the flesh, so to speak. And a finer collection of corpusculae I never have seen. I trust you are not opposed to a mutually beneficial accord between civil and gentle persons. Ah, a curious mind. A most glorious creation. I am here at the behest of my master to offer you a simple exchange. An offer of aid for the promise of aid. The epitome of civil reciprocity. You and he possess a common foe. The power behind the Void Woken has made our lives hell, so to speak. Since the Divine Order unleashed Death Fog against the Black Ring and those darling woodland creatures. And as the gods have shirked their duty, perhaps we could come to a mutually beneficial arrangement pertaining to both of our objectives. Indeed, I can offer you the source channel that you seek forthwith as a gesture of good faith. <sighs> Indeed, the creatures that strut about this realm so often do. Very well. I can see them straining against your fangs. Unleash them, Godwoken. Ask your questions. My master's identity is of no practical consequence in this matter. You need concern yourself with nothing barring the truth that my master always honors his vows. Your smoldering half-demon pet can attest to that. I. She is the one that comes to me, helm in hand, 
in a sad attempt to beg and snivel her way out of previous and quite binding contracts. Alas, I am not at liberty to say more. My master values privacy above all else. He would not take it kindly if he discovered I had been indiscreet. One may ask, one may inquire, but one should be eternally wary of what one demands, and one should heed that twicefold for information like this. There is power in names, power far, far in excess of your mortal limits. I'll not deliver that power unto him. Have your ears been found defective, or do you simply lack the wit to comprehend? I will not speak that name. My master has been troubled by the presence of the void as it creeps ever forward, encroaching on areas in which he himself once ruled supreme. None more so than this island. There is a tree at this island's core which has special significance to my master. Think of it as hallowed, sacrosanct ground. But the Black Ring maggots writhe all about its trunk, and you will exterminate these termites. It is simplicity itself, in truth. Because it is expeditious to do so, my master would have this isle cleared as quickly as possible. The lizard looks about to make sure no one else can hear, leans in and whispers conspiratorially. And if you are to become the new divine, I would much rather be an ally than a foe. After all, the power you wield will be as a great sword to my master's butter knife. There are legions that would follow you, myself included. Your power would be unfathomable. Assuming, of course, you take it for your own. Why, the only thing you truly desire. Or certainly the only thing you truly need. I will reveal unto you the location of the Council of Seven. My master has dealt with many of your ilk. Small-minded creatures with a hunger for power, out to save themselves, or loved ones, or the world, some fantasy or another. But all are willing to strike a covenant if it means their success. One was even willing to give up the location of this council to earn my master's boon. How felicitous that you merely have to spill a little blood to earn the same. said. The Death Fog ushered in the rise of the Void Woken, and whatever gruesome power controls them. Every day we learn more about the ills of the Death Fog, that the Divine Order detonated. The Order I served. I... I... And now we learn it also birthed something awful, something that plagues every corner of the world. Iffen's eyes blaze with rage, and his fists are clenched so tightly the knuckles are white. As he howls his anger free, you hear the echoing howl of his trusty soul. Together they roar in tandem, grief, loss, and rage. When Ifan is howled hoarse, you feel his anger slink away like a whipped cur. Yet his soul wolf remains. Let's go. Redemption's not won by sitting still. you. I'm a demon, not a poodle. And I'm sure you'll tell me all about it, but not now. Now, if you'll leave me to my business. Dark words should not suck. Treat, 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 treat. Gotta get back. Gotta guard. Can't let it out. Can't let them know. Yeah. Not here for you, mortal. Stay out of my way. I relish the scenery. 
and the lack of company. As you reach down, the hound's flesh twists, forming sharp, jagged spikes. Maybe not. You! You are here to work! Are you also here to trade? I have much to show. <laughs> Your friend wanted a new deal. Wanted to renegotiate terms. We have a wager. Some say she succeeds. Some say not. What say you? Ah, very well. I trade, you have coin. I have wares, nothing else matters. You like your nose? Then do not stick it where it's not welcome. We are where we are meant to be. We will be told when we are meant to be somewhere else. Look, do not touch. Not until you fatten my purse. See you again. Perhaps. The hulking warrior's eyes dart about in panic, but his voice is loud and strong, even if it does not quite match the movement of his lips. You! You have been summoned. Go do your duty, now! The elf's face, twisted in a grotesque rage, slowly calms. I beg your pardon. You need to speak to the advocate. The lizard by the table. He is waiting. Sweet thing. Succulent thing. We are so pleased to see you. But not as pleased as him. You look into her eyes and see screams. You hear her gaze upon your body and taste her carnal, violent lust, metallic and sharp as a blade in your mouth. Go. Speak to the Advocate. Make him happy. Bring him pleasure. A most excellent decision. Alas, I fear in my excitement I overspoke and potentially promised more than my meager means are able to provide. Your ability to channel source has sadly already passed the limits of my means. Although let it not be said that I ever shirked my duty. If I cannot gift you one boon, I shall gift you another. It would be such a shame to see this source be simply left languishing in its current vessel after all. There is neither enigmatic lore nor magical jewel required to open the channels of source. It is enough to seize it with sufficient force of will, to know that all creatures are nothing but source and vain. You feel the pull of a far-off connection. You feel the dungeon, the red organic tendrils binding you. Your ears are filled with screams, and you're surprised to find they are your own. Granting the power that you need, Godwoken. 
The gift that I have proffered is free, but it is not without a cost. All things exist in balance, so your gain must mean a loss to another. Do not fear for his soul. It is unworthy. It is already damned. No power in this world can save it. This is an act of kindness. A foul creature locked away for his crimes. Who is he? What has he done? These are not relevant. All that matters is that you are presented with an opportunity. Now, do you accept this felicity or reject my master's grace? Very well. I suspect I shall still be here when you change your mind. And you will change your mind, Godwoken.
scorching lightning, the searing pain forever. The tree's spirit embraces its putrid host, an elven ancestor lost to the same demonic disease that infests all of Blood Moon Island. Qui manduk had omnio myrdus ects, it quot potest edse. A moment passes, then you feel it, clarity. You speak my name. You know my torture. Please, don't judge me for the sickness my roots have spread. I can be free, my soul cleansed. Naivety, stupidity, call it what you want. I wish to put the source within me to good use, and demonology seemed as good a use as any. Silly me, I meant to summon an imp or two. Instead, I ended up hosting a damned archdemon. The roaring in my head, the craving for living flesh, Urges. Good gods, the urges to kill, to hurt. The stronger they became, the harder I fought. And at some point, I was just gone. Deadened, but not dead. And then, away, on an isle I'd never been. Encircled by faces I'd never seen. Watched by a man I'd never known. They called him Doctor. He shouted strange words, and the demon bellowed. Then, one by one, I... They fell. I watched my own hands slaughter them. I tried to resist, but I couldn't. And then a final roar, when the demon rushed away and into the only one still standing. The Doctor. That was my last living memory. The demon may be gone, but its disease still infects my roots, birthing evil into the surrounding soil. While it lives, I am still its rotting servant. I've suffered. The Isle has suffered, but you can end it. The demon has gone, but I am still its slave. While it lives, I am bound by its shackles to this humble plain. Yet you awakened me from nightmare with a single utterance, my name. And I'm grateful for that. How amazing that a name can wield so much power. Remember this lesson when you leave Blood Moon Island. The demon blackens another land now. It possesses the very doctor that liberated it. Speak its name, however. And you expose it. You weaken it. You'll know him when you find him. A doctor that accommodates a demon doesn't see patients, only victims. Destroy it, and you free me to the Hall of Echoes. Destroy it, and my roots taint this isle no longer. Now come closer. I'll say the demon's name only once. The spirit's voice is a harsh whisper. Adramali.
How fares the hunt, my friend? I met him once, during a soiree in Arcs. Quite the eccentric is Dr. Deva. But then again... He looks you up and down. Aren't we all? May you How fares the hunt, my friend? May you... The spirit meditates. He measures every breath with care. In, the druid considers your tale. Yes, she is right. A name holds more power than most of us realize. A drama-like. I know of ways to impair such demons. I will show you a place. The treasures there will sap its will while aiding yours. I implore you, let Elanessa be at ease. Then listen for me. When the breeze blows clean, I will be upon it.
none.
The spirit looks around with wild panic, clawing through its spectral mass with fevered nail. The demon feeds. The demon feeds from the ring. The demon protects. We must know what the demon protects. The demon has an advocate. The advocate kills. The demon has a secret. We must know the secret.